I think Australia has a terrific record for being inventive. There's clearly a brilliant innovative streak in uh, in Australians. We've had an honourable role to play. A lot of the, the first forays into electronics in Australia were about telecommunication. Atomic absorption spectrometer. Black box flight recorder. On the pacemaker. They were experimenting. I have spent the greater part of my working life focused on developing what turned out to be a bionic ear or cochlear implant for profoundly deaf people. Australia kept pace. Australia kept pace with the rest of the world in this technology. CIRAC was the first computer to generate music, and that was the first use of a computer to generate music in the world. The CSRO's government uh, controlled, and they've had some big intellectual property wins recently with the uh, Wi-Fi patent which they uh, won, which is absolutely incredible. Electronics is uh is really a fundamental part of our world and permeates almost every area of activity. One of the worldwide problems with electronics in terms of people understanding it is that they don't. People today accept technology in their hand. We're becoming technological consumers in Australia, not technological innovators. Children of today need to learn how things work. They don't question it. If something seems hard, people won't try necessarily. So they can understand that it just didn't miraculously appear. They don't need to understand what it's doing. There's a very small proportion of the population, perhaps less than 1%, who are aware of technology and how it works and how it functions. The vast majority of people see electronics as being mysterious and it really is this magic black box, something that they could never understand. It's magic to most people. Magic and it's getting too complicated for them to ever catch up. The average person has no knowledge. They have no knowledge of electricity. They don't even know how a light bulb works. I believe that Australia is obsessed with science, but is not adequately putting enough attention onto technology and engineering. In electronics and software there's, there's a lot to learn. There's a vast gulf of technical ignorance if I can call it that. What you must remember back in the 50s when I was a kid you could actually have a general knowledge of everything in radio. Uh, communications, radar, you could understand it all. These days of course you can't. The whole subject of electronics has become so complex that people now have to specialise inevitably and that's a great pity. If you're a specialist in communications and cell phones, there's a good chance you'll know nothing about how a DVD player or a CD works. It's also specialised. It's different today. There are limitless opportunities, but you've got to have someone to do it. I think there is a decline in the electronics industry in Australia. These days, if you're going to be an electronic designer, you've actually got to be a software writer as well. But I think there's also a belief that we can't do this here. Sorry, it was in the forefront of things at the time, but once you stop development, uh, it's pretty hard to get going again. We could have become the software capital of the world for very little money. It, it hasn't really declined, it's just changed. The internet, look at, none of us predicted that. We could waffle on about how we enjoyed our hobby days. No one anticipated that every home, virtually every home, would have access to the world for free. I just say, you don't dare to dream. Do anybody dare to dream? And you can do it, because the world is now open for so many ideas, particularly in the electronics area.